first got interested in the topic of the Mafia because I grew up in New Jersey. That should be self-explanatory. Um, in the early 1990s, I started going online. I actually found a mob historian, David Critchley, from England, who had collected a great deal of information on organized crime. And he said he had some info on Tampa. So I contacted him. He sent me this packet of articles. And I had not really heard much about organized crime in Tampa. I didn't really know anything about it. And I started reading these fascinating stories of uh, gangland killings, of political corruption, of wide open gambling. And I'm like, uh, this might make a good idea for a book. So I started doing some more research and I kind of built on it. And the first book took a while to get a lot of information because Tampa at its heart is a very small city. And a lot of the guys that I wrote about, a lot of people you know, are still in the neighborhoods and grew up here. So um, it was a really interesting topic to me. And the more I dug into it, the more I found this, this fascinating subculture of the underworld in Tampa and how it was really connected to the mafia in Chicago, in New York City, New Jersey. Well, Tampa was off the radar because Tampa was for a very long time a, a small city. It wasn't a big metropolis like New York or Boston. You didn't have the real flashy gangsters that you had up there. And really, it was these were small pockets. These were, you know, mafia families and organized crime groups of 20 to 30, 40 guys. And another reason is because the gambling that was going on at the time was really ingrained into the community. It wasn't really seen as being this terrible vice. So I, I think a combination of those factors, but certainly a guy like Santo Traficante Jr., who was the mafia boss here from the early 1950s through 1987, he was certainly known outside the Tampa area. And, and I think in terms of name recognition, he's probably one of the, the more recognizable mobsters in American history. One of the real unique things about Tampa's organized crime history and the Mafia was, you know, the Mafia itself is a strictly an Italian organization. You have to be Sicilian to be made into the Mafia. But there were guys in organized crime that were Spanish, that were white, that were Cuban, that were very influential. And it was an interesting ethnic mix here that you didn't have in any other city. Uh, you didn't have that in New York. You didn't have that in Chicago. Closest parallel would maybe be New Orleans, but Tampa had a really unique ethnic mix to the underworld element here that, that was, it was really unparalleled anywhere else in the United States at that time. And that really served it as organized crime figures from Tampa, like Traficante, moved to Cuba in the pre-Castro days when they had a lot of interest in the casinos down there. Because these guys were, might have not had a high school education, but they were fluent in Italian, Spanish, and English. And it, it had a real street smarts about them that helped them function really well in Cuba where guys from New York, from the Lower East Side in New York, didn't have that. 